So this question is glove. It's a complex group question from a few years ago. Um, it's on page 37 of the BPP revision kit. As you can see, I've taken the headings from the question and I've added in goodwill, because we know that's going to arise, and I've added in the NCI as well. My advice to you in the exam is write on every second or third line, because sometimes you might find that a new heading in the statement of financial position is required. So you might have a new pension liability or this liability or that liability, whatever. So it makes sense to leave plenty of space so you can slot in extra figures. The first thing we need to do in every group question is to set out our workings. So I've set out workings one to five as usual. Um, and once you've set out your main five workings, then determine your group structure. And we're looking here to see that glove had 80% of body. And in addition, body has 70% of fit. So we have a direct investment of 80% in body. and an indirect investment, 80% of 70%, so that works out as 56%. So the NCI have 20% of body and 44% of fit. And that's the type of thing you can do in that extra 15 minutes to get a feel for how the question is going to be setting itself out. What I would then do is work my way through the question line by line. So sometimes he'll give you information at the top, sometimes he'll just give you the statements of financial position at the top. But clearly all, all of these three companies are part of the group. I've read through the additional information. There's no disposals to worry about, things of that nature. So let's take that approach. So the first thing is that we have PPE. If we add the figures together, we get a total of 406 million. Next, we've got our investment in body. The cost of the investment is used to determine goodwill. Because remember that goodwill is the difference between what I've bought and what I've received for what I've bought. This is our direct investment. So I'm going to go to my goodwill calculation and we're going to have one goodwill calculation for body and one goodwill calculation for fit. What's the cost of that investment? It's $60 million. Next, we've got the investment in FIT, but notice this is body buying the shares in FIT. And what we would say is, therefore, we have an indirect cost in FIT because body has bought the shares. And you therefore ask yourself, who are body's shareholders? And Glove owns 80% of body, so we're going to say that Glove has 80% of that cost of 30 million, which gives us a figure of 24 million to put into the calculation. And Body's NCI has bought the other 20%. So when we come to our NCI calculation, we're going to have an NCI calculation for body and an NCI calculation for FIT, and we're saying that Body's NCI have bought the shares in FIT. So this is the indirect share in FIT. That's 20% of 30 million, which gives us 6 million, but notice, because it's a debit, and if you think about it, the NCI is a credit entry, if it's a debit in a credit entry, we've got to show that as a negative. Next, we've got investments in equity instruments. Not quite sure of any adjustments required, so stick in a figure of 10. Current assets. Add them together. Now, the examiner does tend to like inventory adjustments, fair value adjustments, things of that nature. So. I would personally tend to put a bracketed working in and just see if there's any adjustments required at a later date. 
ordinary shares of the parent company are taken to the consolidated statement of financial position. The share capital of our two companies in which we have investments And we always assume, unless you are told otherwise, and it's very, I've never known him to do this, always assume that there's been no change in the share capital of the two investments. Share capital, 40, 40, 20, and 20. Remember these are workings. There's nothing wrong in the workings with using abbreviations. If you put SC, you know, a marker is not going to think, oh, I've no idea what SC could stand for. So don't worry about it. Um, we then have other reserves. And what I'm going to do is that in my reserves note, I'm going to have a column for retained earnings and a column for other reserves. Certainly looking at recent questions set by the examiner, he has broken down reserves into these two elements. So as far as the parent is concerned, we have retained earnings of 135 and other reserves of 30. In terms of our two investments, let's go up to working number two. We've got other reserves, five and eight, and retained earnings of 25 and 10. So that gives us our totals. We've then got non-current liabilities. Add them together, I've got 50. And current liabilities, add them together, and I've got 47. So can you see that by setting out your pro formas in advance and having workings, it allows you to populate your answers with numbers very, very quickly. What we're now going to do is we're going to go through the extra information. So, note A, we acquired 80% of body on June X5 when body's other reserves were 4 million and its retained earnings were 10. So if we go to working number two, we're saying that Glove, which is our parent company, acquired the subsidiary and those are the reserves at that particular date. Um, the fair value of the net assets of body was 60 million. So I'm going to say here, fair value 60. Can you see that if I add these three figures together, they add up to 54. So again, this is a technique which the examiner seems to like. He will give you the fair value and you have to work out the fair value adjustment as a balancing figure. Well, the fair value adjustment must therefore be 6 million. Body acquired 70% of the ordinary shares of FIT on the 1st of June X5. Notice it's the same date, so we don't have to worry about any dates. When the other reserves of FIT were 8 million and retained earnings were 6. So here I've got 8 and 6. The fair value of the net assets of FIT was 39. So I've got a total here of 39. 20 plus 8 plus 6. If I add those three figures together, that comes to 34. So my fair value adjustment is 5 million. And the excess of the fair value over the net assets of body and fit is due to an increase in non-depreciable land. So can you see what we've done here? We've increased equity by 6 million and 5 million respectively. But if I'm increasing one side of my statement of financial position, it's not going to balance unless I increase the asset side as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to PPE and say plus 6 and plus 5 because those are my fair value adjustments from working number 2. So now we've increased assets by 11 and we've increased equity by 11. So in theory our statement of financial position will continue to balance. There's been no issue of ordinary shares since the 1st of June X5. That's five. Fine. 
The next one's interesting one. And some of these items you look at and you think, well, I really have no idea how to deal with them. If that is the case, ignore them and move on. Your aim in the exam is to get 50 marks. If you can't do it, it doesn't matter. It's still another 49 marks you can find elsewhere in the paper. Um, Body, remember bo which company is Body? Body is one of our subsidiaries, has several trade names, um, and it's marketed those trade names and expense the cost. That's fine, that's what we'd expect to do. None had been acquired externally, and therefore we cannot treat them as intangible assets. But you can treat them as an intangible asset when you acquire another company, because here you've actually bought it, you're buying the intangibles of another company. So it's a third party acquisition. On the acquisition of Body by Glove, a firm of valuation experts valued the trade names at 5 million. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to add in, and this is why I think it's important that you write on every other line, I'm going to add in an extra line for intangibles. And these are worth 5 million. And this valuation had been taken into account when Glove, when Glove was offering 60 million, but it's not included in the fair value of the net assets. So you've got to read that question very, very carefully. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my net assets working, and I'm going to say, well, I now need to add in the intangibles, because those intangibles are not included in this figure of the fair value of 60 million. So I'm going to put that in, in respect of the intangibles, and it then says um, group policy is to amortize intangible assets over 10 years. When did we acquire the subsidiaries? We acquired them on the 1st of June X5. It is now the 31st of May X7, so we've owned them for two years. So I need to charge amortization and that's going to be two years out of ten over oh, sorry uh, multiplied by five million so two years out of ten in respect of five million which means I'm going to amortize the intangibles and the amortization works out as 1 million. So if I'm reducing the value of intangibles from a fair value point of view, I also have to go up here and take away 1 million from the value of intangibles in the assets. Because if I reduce equity, I've got to reduce assets. If I don't do that, my statement of financial position is not going to balance. So that's note two. Note C is in relation to pensions. And can you see what the examiner is doing? He's bringing in P2 topics, which you might expect to come up in section B of the exam. Well, there's no reason why they will necessarily be in part B. They could come up in section A. So if you don't like pensions and you say, well, if a pensions question comes up in section B, I'm just going to do the other question, because you've got a choice in section B, that doesn't work like that. He can force you to deal with pensions or anything he chooses. So working number six. Let's take a look at the pensions position. And during the year, we've got a loss on the obligation so we've got a liability loss of 1.0 million and an asset gain of 0 0.9 million. So it gives us an overall loss of 0 0.1 million. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to credit non-current liabilities with 0.1 million. 
because I've got to increase my losses. And what do we do? This is an actuarial loss. Well, what do we do with actuarial losses? We take actuarial losses to OCI. And OCI then flows through into the statement of financial position as part of other reserves. It's not part of retained earnings. So therefore, when I go to my reserves note, I'm going to say in respect of the pension from working number six, I'm going to reduce other reserves by 0.1 million. And now I'm going to go up to non-current liabilities plus 0.1 from working number six. So that's note C. Note D, we've got some convertible bonds. So again, financial instruments, you need to know your financial instruments rules because they could creep into section A. Anything can creep into section A. Um, what are they? Well, they're convertible bonds. We call this a hybrid or a complex financial instrument. And what we have to do is that we need to split these into a liability and an equity element. When did we issue the bonds? Well, it says we issued them on the 1st of June X6. How do we deal with them? We deal with them as follows. Step one, we calculate, we calculate the liability. And we discount at the rate for a non-convertible bond. So interest is payable annual in arrears at 6%. They can be converted into shares. Um, and it then says debt without the conversion option was 8% per annum. So in terms of doing our calculations, what we would say is at the issue date, the cash flows are year one. Well, when did we issue them? That was going to be the, thir the 1st of June X6. So cash flow is going to be the 31st of the 5th x7. How much is that going to be? It's 30 million. Let's just check. I've got all of these figures and that is a mistake which is easy to make. The value of the bond is 30 million. It's going to pay interest of 6%, and we're going to discount that by 8%. So the amount of interest we're going to physically pay is 1.8 million, and if I discount that at 8%, that gives me a figure. of 1.67. In year two, so this is going to be at the 31st of the 5th x8, it's 1.8 million is the amount of interest and I'm going to discount that for two years.
and that gives me a figure. Let me just set this up. That gives me a figure of 1.54. And in year three, you always assume that you repay the bond. So in year three, we would pay the interest of 1.8 million and we would pay the capital of 30 million thirty one point eight divided by one point zero eight to the power three at twenty five point two four So that gives us a grand total of 28.45 million. Step two, equity equals the balance equals 1.55 million. because the total figure works out as 30 million. So what I'm going to do here is I need to reflect those numbers and what do we have to do is well I'm going to increase equity by 1.55 and that would normally go to other reserves. So in respect of the bond from working number 7 We've got 1.55. And then we need to look at the dates carefully because the next adjustment is that we need to take into consideration the fact that as far as this question is concerned, um, we are at the end of the following year. So therefore we've got to charge interest. And therefore, if we are charging interest, oh, something's gone a bit crazy. Put in that page. Excuse me for this. This is my fault. This is all the fault of Bill Gates. Oh, I don't want that. Let me just put this on pause. So the, the final step that we have to make is in respect of calculating interest for the year. So we would say step three, interest. We, we have a liability of 28.45 million and in the income statement we're going to charge 8% interest on that amount. That gives me an interest figure of 2.28 million. How much is the cash paid the cash paid is 30 million times 6%, which works out as 1.8 million. So I have a difference of 0.48 million. And that difference is the difference between the interest we have charged in the income statement, which is 2.28, and the interest that we have physically paid. Now it says in the question, um, no bonds will be converted, um, the interest has been paid and accounted for in the financial statements. So that is the amount that has already appeared in the income statement. So what we have to do is we have to take this extra 0 0.48 million and debit the income statement 0 0.48 and credit the liability, 
0.48 million. So the figure in the balance sheet is going to be this initial figure of 28.45 and I'm going to add to that 0.48 million. So 28.45 plus 0.48 gives me a grand total of 28.93 million. Now it says the bonds have been included in current liabilities at their face value of 30 million. So what I'm going to do there's various ways you can do this. I'm going to take them out at their face value of 30 million and put them in at their correct value per IAS 32 and that's from working number 7 of 28.93 million. What else do we have to do? Well the other adjustment that we need to make is can you see that I've debited the income statement with extra interest? Well, if, it go, if it's affecting the income statement, the income statement flows through into retained earnings. So I go up to reserves, interest from working number 7, 0.48, and that's going to reduce profits by 0.48 million. So there's a lot to deal with there. Note E, and this is a strange one. On the 31st of May X7, Glove acquired plant with a fair value of 6 million. Um, and what did we do? Well, we swapped assets. We gave them land and they gave us plant. The land had a carrying value of 4 million and an open market value of 7. When you swap assets, you should value the assets at the fair value of the asset that we have lost. So can you see that we had an asset of in the accounts at 4 million which was actually worth 7. So when we gave it up, we effectively we've given it up and we've we've made a profit of 3 million. So I'm going to put that profit of 3 million into retained earnings. So asset swap. We've made a profit of 3 million because it's it's it got a carrying amount of 4 million but it's got a fair value of 7 and I bring the plant into my accounts at 7 million. It says in the question that we've brought it in at the value of 4 so I need to increase PPE by 3 million. No F, no, good, no impairment of goodwill, no G, we're going to use the proportionate method. So can you see we've now dealt with every single piece of information in the question. When you reach that point, my advice, go to your net assets working. And let's see what we've got here. So for FIT, net assets have increased by 4 million and all of that is an increase in retained earnings. If we take a look at BODY, BODY's net assets were worth 65 at acquisition. They're now worth 80. Let's check that, 45, 70, 76. What's changed? Can you see other reserves have increased by one? Other reserves have gone up by one and therefore retained earnings have gone up by the balancing figure which is 14. We need to work out goodwill. We've got the cost of the investment, the indirect cost in FIT and we add to that the NCI An acquisition. And in doing so, 
What is the NCI at acquisition? Well, the NCI have 20% of body. Body's net assets are worth 65. So that's going to be 20% of 65 is 13. Less the net assets at acquisition, which is 65. So we've got a goodwill figure of 8 million for body. For fit, what are the net assets at acquisition? They are 39 million. What is the NCI's share of those net assets? We go up to working number one. The NCI have a 44% share. That's 17.16. We take away the net assets at acquisition, which are 39. If you put that through, that gives us a figure of 2.16. So our goodwill total overall is 10.16 million. I'm going to take that 10.16 million from working number three up to the face of my answer. So we've dealt with goodwill for both companies. Now we're going to deal with the NCI. We've calculated the figures in the goodwill count. Never calculate the same figure twice. Wasting time, isn't it? So we've calculated the net asset, the NCI at acquisition, and we've got figures of 13 and 17.16. And we then say we're going to give them their share since acquisition. For body, it's 20%. How much have bodies net assets have increased by? The NCI don't care whether it's retained earnings or other reserves. So they simply say, well, in working number two, net assets increased overall by 15 million. So we're going to give them 20% of 15 million, which is 3 million. And for fit, it's going to be 44%. We go up here, 44% of 4 million. So that's 1.76. If we're going to give some of the profits since acquisition to the NCI, we've got to give the other profits to the group. So since acquisition. It's going to be 80% of 14 and 1 for body. Because body is made 14 in terms of retained earnings. So that is 11.2. And for other reserves, it's 0 0.8. And then it's 56% of 4 million for fit. All of that is retained earnings, so that's 2.24. We can now work out our totals. One hundred and fifty point nine six retained earnings. thirty two point two five for other reserves. I'm going to take those totals and I'm going to take those up to the statement of financial position. Retained earnings a hundred and fifty point nine six from working number five. Other reserves thirty two point two five from working number five.
Don't worry in the exam too much about transferring the numbers. We are reasonably sympathetic when marking. NCI, 10 million for body. Plus 18.92 for fit. Gives us a grand total of 28.92. NCI 28.92 from working number four. What you can now do is tidy up. So I've got 458.16 for equity and liabilities. Oops, I'm out by 100. Yeah, 320. Oh, I can't add up. Yep. Okay. So that is how to deal with an exam standard 